If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, Ninja. This is a response video to... Nimnim? Gage, I'm not sure how to say your YouTube channel. Video in the description below. Go and watch that first actually, and then come back to this. Alright, we're all good? Mulligans in Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm assuming that most people watching this are watching from a Magic the Gathering background because that's mostly what I do on my channel. I play Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, but mostly Magic, that's what I have around here. But I've played Yu-Gi-Oh!, I've played Pokemon, I've played a bit of Hearthstone, I play a lot of trading card games. The one of those that does not have mulligans, of any sort really, is Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you've never played it before, you might not understand why. Even if you have played it before, perhaps it does seem unfair, but I'm about to explain as best I can why Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't get a mulligan, and all of these other games do. Gage, you bring up three games in particular, uh, aside from Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, and Pokémon. All of those are games that feature a more resource-intensive system. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! is resource-intensive. For those that haven't played it before, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not... You can't be an idiot and play the game. Sometimes it seems that way. If you go to the wrong locals. But you can't actually be all that dumb. Same thing with Magic the Gathering. But it's a different kind of skill set. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, your resources are actually about as minimal as you can have. They're the obvious ones. Cards in hand, cards on the board, etc. And you even get some restrictions on how much of these you can have. You can't Splinter Twin kill someone in Yu-Gi-Oh! because you only get five monster slots, for instance. But, those are just the tangible resources. There are intangible resources as well. But not many in Yu-Gi-Oh! You get one normal summoner set per turn. And that's basically it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. There are some others, like switching your monster's position once a turn, no more than once. You get one battle, but really the only one that matters usually is you get one normal summoner set per turn. Compare that to, say, Magic the Gathering. In Magic the Gathering, we have all of the same tangible resources, plus we get some intangible ones like mana, along with another tangible one, what generates mana, Lands. Obviously, it's not only lands, but lands are the primary way, and if you want to get something that generates mana other than being a land, outside of Vintage, you need land usually to get to that point, say, a creature or an artifact that will do so. Your Elvish Mystic or your Chromatic Lantern, first thing came to mind, you need lands to get there. As such, if you have in the vast majority of Magic decks, a hand with no lands or moxen, you can't keep it. Period, right? You simply cannot keep a hand with no lands. And so you have to mulligan. That's why Magic the Gathering has a mulligan. Somewhere from, say, 20 to 26 cards, it depends on the deck, you can have fewer, you can have more, uh, will be lands. But if you just happen to draw the wrong cards, you literally cannot play the game. In the case of Pokémon, the TCG, you literally cannot keep a hand if it doesn't have a basic in it. And by basic, I'm being broad here. I'm including EXs, of course. But you can't keep a hand unless it has at least one that you can put out as your active immediately. If you don't have one, you mulligan. And yeah, you keep the same number of cards. Your opponent goes up a card. They may draw a card. And so on, right? But since you actually cannot keep a hand that doesn't have one, you get a mulligan. Hearthstone plays a little bit like Magic the Gathering, except there aren't lands, so you would think maybe Hearthstone gets a buy, and perhaps you could. If you design Hearthstone such that there were no mulligans, it would dramatically change the game. Because in Hearthstone, you still have something else that's not featured in Yu-Gi-Oh! You have a curve. You don't have lands that generate mana, but you do still have mana. And so, if you happen to see a hand that has all eight, <laughs> I don't know, all eight drops, you can't really play that hand. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just not a thing. 
Soon as I say that, someone's going to prove me wrong. Someone who's a Hearthstone veteran is going to show me a deck that does that, but I can't think of a way that you would. Yu-Gi-Oh! does not work that way. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, people that don't play the game look at it from the outside in and go, this is the most combo-rific game that I've ever seen, because Speedroid Terror Top. I know that's not the only card that's like this, but it's... What is this thing? Um, if it's not limited or banned come the next format, I, I don't know what to think. This is a card you can buy it, go from itself into another Speedroid, and then into an XYZ, and then f choose your own adventure from there. <laughs> it's a stupid card. It's crazy. But just this card on its own, if it's the only one in your hand, you can do some shenanigans, right? And it's a three of. If you had a mulligan rule in Yu-Gi-Oh, of any sort, really, you improve the consistency of combo decks that don't require that many resources. Some, a lot of these combos, mind you, you use a card, you gain a card right back. Speedroy Terror Top, for God's sake, <laughs> replaces itself immediately. A lot of these do. Uh, I don't know, Wind Up Magician and Wind Up Shark. That goes a little bit crazy. ABCs, all of the, the basically everything in the ABCs deck replaces itself. And so on and so forth. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game about maintaining card advantage, and if you give a mulligan, you improve the consistency so much that you make these decks kind of broken. Like, I like play, even though there's that perception of Yu-Gi-Oh! players, I like to play contro I, control decks, stun decks, lock decks, whatever we're going to call them. I like playing any card with the name Vanities at the front of it. I like preventing my opponent from doing things. Part of the way that I'm able to play this game is that I get... There are some... Okay, so... There's some times when you'll play against someone, you literally cannot beat them on their first turn. Um, they just got the combo and they were able to do everything they needed, and that's Yu-Gi-Oh! for you. Because there's not a mulligan, sometimes you can get the wrong cards and you can dirtle and dirtle and dirtle and dirtle. But in Yu-Gi-Oh!, because there's no mana curve, because there's no cost associated with... And I maybe should have put this earlier in the video. Th in the Hearthstone section, perhaps, there's no cost associated with any of your cards beyond, you know, if it's five or six for level, that's one tribute, if it's seven or higher, that's two, there's some, or there are three, there's specific costs for others, it's really not a big deal when you get into the higher tiers of Yu-Gi-Oh. That being the case, you can play pretty much any hand in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I know that sounds a little crazy because you're all, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you think of those hands that were just terrible, but not literally every hand, but the vast majority, because unless, if you built your deck correctly, there are going to be very few cards that are dead. Everything is a part of the machine and it can work right then. Whereas if you play, say, Magic the Gathering, this Jace the Mind Sculptor is an incredibly powerful card that I'm not going to be able to play for a few turns. If I kept a hand with three lands and all four drops or higher, I may never play that Jace. Weird example, but if you draw the wrong cards, you can't play um, because magic is, has that sort of resource-intensive management to it. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you do still have some ways to mulligan, actually. For example, you could use card destruction... That card is banned. That's, that card is OG banned. That's, that's been banned for forever. No, no, no. Actually, in all seriousness, a card like Magical Mallet. This is one that I used when I was playing in middle school and high school uh, all the time. I appreciated that it would let me... It's basically a Paris mulligan. For those... or That's a magic term. It's a partial mulligan. You take X cards from your deck, or from your hand, shuffle them in, and then draw X cards. But because you're using the Magical Mallet itself, it's actually minus one, which is why the card never sees play. For some extremely combo-intensive decks that are trying to go off on turn one, you could actually consider running a card like Magical Mallet. Probably not, to be honest, 
um, it shuffles them in, and so there's a chance you'll draw those same cards. It's not, for example, banish them, then draw X, and then shuffle the banished cards back. That might be. That might make the cut a little bit easier. Another example is Reload, which is usually worse than Magical Mallet. It's a quick play, though, so that gives it some extra utility, but it requires you to drop the whole hand, and you still have the minus one. Sometimes, though, Reload can just be better, for the same reason that when you play, say, going back to Magic, uh, Time Twister or Wheel of Fortune, uh, the fact that you get a fresh set of new cards means whatever that you had that was dead previously has potential to become a live card. Although, again, in Yu-Gi-Oh, that doesn't happen all that often. I used to play a deck that was, it was tier 45 at best. Uh, the whole deck revolved around getting a boss monster like Obelisk the Torment or Beast King Barbaros or Light and Darkness Dragon or something like that and being able to quickly special summon or get it out to the field. Normal summon it. But you... so you special summon a bunch of little monsters and then normal summon an Obelisk and go from there. Part of the reason that deck does not work is because it's a Yu-Gi-Oh deck that has some terrible, terrible hands. If I don't have a boss monster, I can't win. I mean, I can win. There, there's the extra deck for stuff like that. Probably not going to happen. If I have a hand with nothing but boss monsters, I can't win. Yu-Gi-Oh decks that are built appropriately do not have that problem. And so Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't get a mulligan. Little experiment for you. Get some of your friends together that play Yu-Gi-Oh and say, just for, just for playtesting purposes, or for a party, or whatever, we're gonna try this with mulligans. We're gonna say, uh, you can, l let's try the, the, the Magic the Gathering mulligan that they used to have. Just take the number of cards in your hand, shuffle them back in, and draw that many minus one. Now in Yu-Gi-Oh, you might think that's a pretty big cost because you start with so few cards. You start with five, not seven as in Magic. But you don't need that, again, I just talked about Speed Roid Mother F and Terror Top. <laughs> you don't need that many cards for some shenanigans in this game. Just see how that goes with your friends. If you keep doing that for long enough, eventually you and your friends will start building more combo-oriented decks that go off on turns one or two. And that's what they're dedicated, that's what they're built to do, because you get so many more chances to look for that combo. And I don't think that that's where we want Yu-Gi-Oh to be, ultimately. I still think, I still hope, I still hope, that Yu-Gi-Oh is a skill-intensive game. And I think it is. I think it is, actually. Notwithstanding some players. <laughs> but I think that Yu-Gi-Oh actually is a skill-intensive game. Depends on the matchup, depends on the meta, depends on the tech cards. A lot of the skill is in deck building nowadays, I admit. But even in the play itself, if you give people mulligans, it might seem like that makes it more skill intensive. It's a trap. It's a trap. In general, mulligans do, because that means there are more decisions. But it makes the format so much more linear. Anyway, I talked about that for much longer than I had hoped to. So I, I do appreciate, Gage, your video, and. I actually very much enjoyed it. Shout out to James for recommending it to me. You are the boss, James Walker, Texas Ranger. And take care, Magic community. Take care, Yu-Gi-Oh community. Take care, YouTube. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.